Grief is Real, Big, Better Shared, the podcast everyone needs to hear, but nobody wants to hear. I'm Diane Brockmeyer, the CEO of Mid-America Transplant, and we are honored to sponsor this episode of Grief is Real, Big, Better Shared. At Mid-America Transplant, we have the privilege of working with families across Southern Missouri and Northeast Arkansas who choose to donate their loved one's organs or tissues. While donation often brings families comfort, they are still heartbroken by their loss. We are proud to work with the Center for Good Grief and appreciate everything they are doing in the region to help bring healing to people who are coping with loss. Grief support is especially meaningful to me as it was a tremendous help to my daughter who lost her dad when she was seven years old. 20 years later, she still recalls the positive, safe feelings she had with her grief support group. They understood her. Mid-America Transplant is inspired by life and by the donor families who give transplant patients a second chance. For more information about becoming a donor, visit sayyesgivelife.org. Hello, welcome to Grief is Real, Big, Better Shared. We're back with part two of Grief in the Holidays. Well, we're back to talk more about grief in the holidays, and I'm joined here with my wonderful colleagues, Erin and Carolyn. So thank you both for, for being back for part two. Thanks. So, you know, we typically do this all the time before we can get back into this. Erin, can you just give us a kind of a quick review of what is just grief on a normal Tuesday? And then we'll talk more specifically about the holidays. Sure. So at the Grief Center, we always say that grief is all the thoughts and feelings that run around inside of us when a loved one dies. And, you know, we know that we grieve in different ways. Usually um, when people think of grief, they think of the emotional aspect Um, the sadness, but it's also the physical effects of grief on our bodies. It's um, the spiritual effects, psychological, and the way that it changes our behavior. So, um, you know, grief is a whole body experience. Um, Grief also comes in waves. So when, um, you know, grief comes out of nowhere and kind of crashes over you, and, and it's often unexpected, Um, You know, that's the way that a lot of people experience grief. But of course, with the holidays, we see that wave coming. Yes. It's on that calendar. It's yelling at us months in advance, right? Sometimes people start talking about it in July or August that, oh, how are we going to handle the holidays? Yes. So in our last episode, we really discussed in detail why the holidays are tough, why that brings on a different level of intensity with grief. And so just for a quick little review... As we opened up, we said grief is hard on a normal Tuesday. And so if it's hard on just a normal Tuesday, then yes, the holidays are going to bring a different level of intensity. And why? Because oftentimes family is the central focus. There's so much added stress and energy with the buildup. Mm. Um, The holidays are a time of remembering, even if you are not trying to remember smells will be out in stores and they'll remind you there'll be ads there's just so many messages coming at us in so many different ways Um, and then also past traditions you know our own mind takes us to um, past traditions within our families and those things that are ingrained and connected with the holidays and sometimes you're just not even consciously aware of it Mm -hmm. but but Mm -hmm. it comes and so That's why, that's why we're here doing two episodes on grief and the holidays, Mm -hmm. because it just brings so much intensity, the different ways we grieve, as Erin mentioned, it's just all tangled up there together. And it's a beautiful tangle. I mean, we know that grief is a reflection of love. We grieve because we love. We grieve sometimes more intensely at the holidays because love is often more intense at the holidays. Mm -hmm. And so in this episode, as we look at the holidays, um, we want to really kind of look at our needs. Um, And so we're going to start with the importance of self care uh, with the holidays. Yeah, absolutely. It's so important to remember to take care of yourself during the holidays. 
Um, I think it's important, even if you're not grieving, <laughs> to take right. care of yourself yes. at the holidays. And it's very, it's a time of year that's very difficult to um, to have to find the time. Um, but it's so much more important when you're grieving to take that time. And you know, we think a lot of times it's like, well, physical care. That's just something you know that comes intuitively. But it really doesn't. You probably have noticed that when you're busier and more stressed out, you neglect your physical needs. So this is something that you have to do intentionally, you know, um, to, to think about um, eating meals on time and going to bed at a reasonable hour instead of staying up and, you know, wrapping presents all night or things like that, you know, that, um, that you need to do while you're grieving because grief takes a toll on your body and you um you have to intentionally um you know nourish your body and mm -hmm. um give it rest in order to get through this time um so yeah those are two components that are really important is rest and nutrition so you know um getting enough sleep um you know having a good bedtime routine where you can wind yourself down for the night and really um, rest your body and then also trying to eat good foods mm -hmm. you know because the holidays we have so many uh, sweet sexual. options you know yes. and and it's totally okay to indulge here and there but you know if all you're eating is sweet potato pie <laughs> the whole time <laughs> then you probably need to eat a salad every once in a while you know just yes. the balance the balance right? I have a friend who says this is the holidays she buys more sausage butter and cream cheese I mean in like a <laughs> yes. matter of four weeks yes. than a whole year and she said I've really thought about that if I'm buying so much I'm also consuming more than I consume in a whole year and That's right and that does that does impact us that because mm -hmm. yeah. typically at the holidays it's heavier foods yes, yes. <laughs> out, maybe more alcohol um, and things like that and so that does make our body sluggish when grief also makes it sluggish as well right. yeah yeah and uh, it's none of this is meant to to shame anyone for no. your choices at all it's just a just being conscious just being aware of how it's affecting you grief is already taking a toll on your body mm -hmm. So what are the choices that you're making? How are they taking a toll on on your body as well? Yeah, and just focusing a little more on balance. Yes. You know. Yeah. It's not it's not saying I can't do these things, but just balancing it. Like you said, right. balance the three uh, party meals that you had yes, right. with a salad night. <laughs> right, right. Well, I have a client too who just realized how much she was not drinking water during the holidays. So she started carrying mm -hmm. around a big jug just to help r her get her water in because she was drinking, you know, other things. Yeah. Yes. She was at parties and things like that. I sure. was just going to say that I'm terrible at remembering to drink water. And when you have access to so many other mm -hmm. types of drinks, it's easy right. just to, oh, here's another one and, and you drink that. But I love the idea of just carrying that jug around mm -hmm. with you and um, just reminding yourself. So, the, you know, the physically taking care of your body is kind of the first step because if you your body can't keep going, <laughs> then right. the rest of you can't. And that leads us into talking about that emotional and spiritual self-care that's so important as well. You know, I think um, time management is so difficult mm. during the holidays. Yes. And if, if you're anything like me, you put everything on a calendar or you'll forget to do it. So put self-care time on, on mm -hmm. your calendar, like schedule it into your day. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm much more likely to, um, perform a self-care task if I put it on my calendar, um, you know, to, to go for a walk or, yeah. you mm -hmm. know, cause you, you get so busy during the holidays with all the tasks that, you're trying to complete, but you also need to take time out to rest and fill your spirit and your emotional needs. And this also means to take time out for your grief mm -hmm. during the holidays. It's very important to to take some time to remember your loved one and ask yourself, what do I need in my grief right now? Mm -hmm. You know, what emotional um, needs are coming up for me? Do I need time alone? Do I need to reach out for support? Mm -hmm. Do I need to cry? <laughs> do I need to take a nap? You know, what do I need? And then that that spiritual piece as well. Mm -hmm. The holidays are full of spiritual and religious traditions and rituals. And that may be something that you find comfort in and you might want to lean into that. Mm -hmm. But that also may be very difficult as well during the holidays and you may need to do something different, and that's okay, too. You may just need to spend some time by yourself or you, in nature 
and, um, you know, get your spiritual needs filled a different way. So, you know, just mm-hmm. thinking of yourself in a very holistic way and all the different aspects that you may be hurting through your grief and taking care of those needs. And one thing we haven't talked about much in terms of that is that um, we've talked about stress of the holidays, but sometimes that produces anxiety. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. I think, um, as you were saying, putting things on your calendar to um, to help take care of yourself, it's also important to fill that time in your day, have this time for relaxation, you know, yes. whether it's some breathing exercises or whether it's meditation um, uh, some yoga, something that that's going to relax your body, because that is so important as you move through the holidays, because it is a cumulative effect. The effect of grief on your body is is cumulative. And the effect of the holidays on your body is a cumulative thing by by, you know, December 24th or December 31st when it's New Year's Eve. We're exhausted. Yes. Right. So um, so putting those things, those small things into place before we get to that point so that we can manage that along the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And while you're talking, I was thinking also crossing some things off of your list on the calendar as well that, that really can wait or really aren't as important as other things and giving yourself permission to say, no, I'm not going to do this smaller task that is not, you know, it's a, Mm -hmm. it's a nice to have, not a have to do. Yeah. And I just have to say here that, self-care has changed over the years. Sometimes when I think we used to hear that in the past, we thought, oh, that's a massage or a bubble bath. And while I think it would be great if we could all have a daily massage, that's (laughs) not realistic. And I know sometimes I fall into the trap of not scheduling self-care because I think, well, I don't have time for that. And I think that that should be, when you have that thought, you really need some (laughs) self-care. It's like a red flag. It's very much a red flag. And so simple things, you know, if it's just, if it's a walk and I tell people all the time, even if you just walk three houses on your street and you turn around you and, and walk those three houses back, there has been a moment, a break in the chaos or mm-hmm. the stress. Um, there are so many apps out there now that are free mm. and they will, you can set the time that you want it to tell you that you'll do a mindfulness, yes. a breathing activity mm-hmm. that will take less than five minutes. And so I really do think there are some really great practical things when we're grieving that don't cost anything and that don't take a lot of time. Right. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And it also can be, I think sometimes too, we think about self-care as selfish, you know, um, the, again, the importance of scheduling it. Like, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sit on the couch and I'm gonna watch a movie on a Sunday afternoon, and I'm just gonna, you know, be quiet and under a blanket and, or something like that. I mean, the, we have to really talk to ourselves about that selfish thought that it is not selfish. It is uh, a way to nurture ourselves, to fuel ourselves back, to go into the next, you know, mm-hmm. days ahead. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I know I speak to so many clients who equate self-care with selfish, Mm -hmm. just like not just, you know, subconsciously. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, that's not what it is. It's really kind of a fuel to keep you going. You're going to hit a wall at some Mm -hmm. point where you can't take care of the things that you need to take care of or the people that are depending on you if you're constantly depleted all the time. And so it's, you know, I think everyone deserves self-care no matter what they are are going to be accomplishing later. But, you know, if you're the type of person that kind of needs that permission to take care of yourself, you can also think of it as you're not going to be able to take care of the things and the people that need you later if you don't um, refuel yourself. Yeah. And sometimes we say to our clients that, you know, maybe they have to tell their family, well, my grief counselor told me, you know, <laughs> that's right. so I think that's also what we're using this episode as you can walk away from this and yes. say, Angela and Aaron and Carolyn said, yes, <laughs> yes absolutely. I, I, I was told I was told I need to do <laughs> yes. this. Yes. 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 Well, in our last episode, we we really talked a lot about um, some different practical tips to help people cope uh, during Thanksgiving. And um, I think those all certainly apply to uh, December holidays as well. But let's just kind of look at those um, in light of thinking about December holidays and maybe just uh, things that might be a little bit more uh, specific to these holidays other than Thanksgiving. 
Yes, absolutely. So, you know, just like we talked in the last episode, there are things that you can do to welcome your loved one to the holiday. It's so important to remember them. Um, so there are some different ideas that you can use for December holidays. So um, a lot of times people like to um, bring in holiday objects that remind them of their loved one. Um, this could be um, things from the past, uh, such as, you know, if you if your family has the same stocking for loved ones every year, mm-hmm. you know, to, to make sure to bring out their stocking as well and, and put it up just like you you normally would. Um, some families that we've heard of have um, done ornament exchanges or, or bring ornaments that remind them of their loved ones, um, you know, to, to put on the tree and to tell stories about their loved ones through the ornaments. And I just love that idea. And I know that a lot of families have really had meaningful experiences through doing that. Um, you know, I know that um, some Jewish families like to incorporate their um, storytelling of their loved ones into the lighting of the menorah candles and things like that. So, you know, whatever holiday you're celebrating, you can find ways to bring your loved one into the holiday and and into the table um, with you. Um, You can bring your loved one to the table literally if you want to by, um, you know, bringing an empty chair that, that represents where they would normally sit or by uh, making a favorite food Mm -hmm. for the holiday dinner. Mm -hmm. I think this is a good point to talk to some families as well, because sometimes parents and grandparents can be a little worried about grieving during the holidays with children. Mm -hmm. Um, I had a wonderful uh, seven-year-old years ago that I saw. And when the Christmas decorations came out, um, mom did not get dad's stocking out. I mean, she left it in the box and actually put it back in the closet. And this little seven-year-old came home from school and the house was decorated and she went and found her dad's stocking and promptly put it where it always went. Wow. And mom took it down and put it away. Seven-year-old got it back out. And uh, so the seven-year-old came in to see me and was just could not believe what, what is wrong? What is wrong with my mom? She kept putting it away. And mom is like, what is wrong with her? It's sad and terrible, and I don't want to make her sad. And so, again, we've talked about this in some other episodes with children's grief that we so badly want to to take care of our kids, and we don't want to make them sad. And I think it's this is an important place to say we're not making them sad. You right. know, they are grieving as well, and these are traditions that they're used to, and these are um, connectors to their loved one, and it can be a really um, helpful way to help them grieve is to have maybe the stocking. And I know that over the years we've had many children who uh, during the holiday season might write notes or draw pictures and put in uh, their dad's stocking or mm-hmm. their, or maybe if it's their sibling who died. And that is a very beautiful way of mourning and allowing them to express that grief uh, during the holidays. So yes. it's just finding those ways to do that is so important. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And I just love how kids grieve so simply yes. sometimes compared to us adults, how <laughs> it's like, well, of course we're going to bring dad's stocking. Right. Out, right? right. It, it wasn't even a question to right. her. And and I love just that very um, open and honest approach to mm-hmm. grief. And adults can really learn yes. from that yes. example, um, for sure, that the kids set for us sometimes. And, you know, that kind of goes into the next point, which is that the grief is going to be in the holiday with us. That's yes. just a fact. And there isn't any way <laughs> to avoid bringing it into the holidays, even if you ignore it or don't talk about it, it's still going to be a visitor in the room. You're just like Carolyn said um, in the last episode, the elephant in the room. Um, It's going to be there. It's just, are you going to talk about it or not? Um, So, you know, just expect that the grief is going to be there during the holidays and, you know, that it's okay to feel however you feel. You know, we talked in the last episode about holding uh, two different emotions at one time, you know, so you can hold your your holiday joy or, you know, positive feelings that may come up in one hand and the grief and the sadness and, and any other feelings that you have in the other. Um, you know, it's it's going to be complicated and that's OK. Absolutely. Yes. And I think um, we talked about in, in the last episode about um, making plans. And I think um, sometimes with. Uh, with plans, um, 
that sounds uh, complicated and detailed and like a lot. Um, but the plan can be um, that I'm going to take some of these things away this year. Um, am I going to send the cards? Am I going to send as many cards? Mm -hmm. um, am I going to change that just this year? Mm -hmm. Am I going to decorate the house? Am I going to do all the decorations? Or maybe I'm just going to put up just one little small tree. Um, and so it's really looking at, at what you normally do and consulting with family too, because as we've talked about, you're grieving as a family, but yet you all have different needs. And um, just like Angela's example with the child, the seven-year-old um, wanting to put the stocking up, um, she had a need for it to be there. Yes. She had a need for her dad to be represented there. Yes. Her mom had a need to not think about it. Right. And um, both of those are valid needs. And so really balancing the whole family's needs for what they need out of the holidays. So sit around, have a conversation, get the paper and the, the pen out and make a list and a plan of the things that you want to do, that you want to be sure that you do, or that you want to maybe do differently this year. Um, and it, and that can be um, part of the memorialization too. Um, the things you want to do, maybe you're going to um, serve meals in their honor. Maybe it's uh, donate something uh, mm -hmm. in honor of them. So just creating those those plans for what you want to do, but also knowing your limits. And um, so so this to do list um, may be uh, shorter and smaller, and it may involve more things like we talked about earlier about self care. Mm -hmm. um, it may be involve the decorating and the cooking and all that but it also may involve a walk down the street looking at Christmas lights silently. Mm, yeah. It may um, involve, you know, sitting on the porch under a blanket with some hot cocoa. Yeah. Um, some things that are just more uh, relaxing and self-care focused um, because you do have limits. And again, uh, grief uh, is a cumulative effect. Mm -hmm. and, and so the holidays are no different. And so knowing what those limits are physically, knowing what your limits are emotionally. And I thought it was a great point Aaron brought up about your limits spiritually. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes that can be hard. It may have been the tradition that you always go to candlelight Christmas mm -hmm. Eve service. And maybe that just doesn't feel good for you this year. It feels too hard, too intense. Um, that's okay. Um, it's okay to give yourself permission to do something different. Mm -hmm. um, but most of all, just never losing hope and we talked about in the last episode um, kind of why we do this work and why it's meaningful to, to us. And I think that is that is one of the biggest reasons is because we see hope. Yes. And right now it doesn't feel like it. It's hard for you to see. But uh, it doesn't mean that that joy and that meaning and even those joyful and meaningful holidays um, can't be there again. You just don't see it right now. But know that we've seen it. We've all been doing this work a long time, and mm -hmm. we've seen so many people find that joy in their holiday again and always carry their loved one with them. Um, it's always a presence. It doesn't go away, but it doesn't mean that you can't experience that joy too. Yes. I think that's a good point to remember that there is humor with grief sometimes too. And sometimes yes. that can really surprise us. It can yes. just come out of left field or something. I know um, I was sitting here listening to Carolyn. It made me think when my dad died, we were trying to decide what we were going to do. And we decided we wanted to light a candle. And I think it was somewhere in the 90s, uh, floating candles became a thing. Yes. Right. And my mom had bought all these floating candles and there's just this we all could remember this like my dad seeing them for the first time and he was like huh really <laughs> <laughs> and his next comment was well that's kind of stupid and <laughs> so when we we landed on we were going to light a candle it's like we all went back to that conversation yes. and we were like floating candles and so that's what we started doing at christmas was yes. lighting a floating candle and it makes us laugh mm -hmm. and and we all kind of go it's pretty stupid, you know, yeah. and it just, but it brings some joy <laughs> yes. and it brings some laughter, even though obviously we'd much rather have him than yes. a floating candle. Yes. But I think we have to remember sometimes that, that, um, that humor can come and surprise yeah. us in our grief. Definitely. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. My uh, father was um, well known for uh, being a little bit grinchy at Christmas, <laughs> um, but yet still loved his presence. And so we would go every year to this Christmas performance that he refused to go with us to. Uh, at Theater Memphis, A Christmas Carol. 
And every year while we were gone, he would open his presents, but we wouldn't know it. (laughs) He would be using them in front of us the whole Christmas season. And then the Christmas morning, he would open up this empty box and say, well, there's nothing in here. And and so every year we talk about this. And a few years we've wrapped up an empty box, you know, um, just kind of to represent that because it was and it it is a humorous part of it, you know, that he was kind of grinchy about it. And (laughs) That's hilarious. That reminds me of the humor and grief. Um, my uh, grandmother, who was, you know, my person, she died a couple weeks before Christmas several years ago. And um, when we had her funeral, um, we, you know, when you're behind the curtain and you're saying goodbye, well, our family started telling stories about my grandmother and we just were in uproarious laughter. Oh. And it was funny because one of the cousins that wasn't behind the curtain later was like, we did not know what was going on with y'all because right. we right. were laughing so hard after. It was just because we were telling funny stories about my grandmother and it was very respectful of her. But it was just sort of, you know, it was joy. It was mm-hmm. joy and yeah. just humor in our family is a big way that we um, deal with grief as well. So, yeah, that's such an important part. Yeah, it is. Absolutely. Well, let's talk about some of the thoughts we often have when we're grieving, and I think especially at the holidays. And so we think, think this is really important and pretty practical because these are things that we've heard from a lot of clients over many, many years and some work that we do with with folks to help them like, well, if that's your first thought, and that might not be the most healthy thought, but it is the first <laughs> and we have to start there with this. This is the first thought. What might be the second thought? And so that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to look at honest to goodness first thoughts that people have said to us over the years regarding the holidays. And we're going to think about maybe what some second thoughts might be. So I'm going to throw out the first one is I'm not going to do anything this year. So what might a second thought be? Yeah, I love this one because I think so many clients do um, say that. Mm -hmm. I just don't want to do anything. I'm not going to do anything. But um but also what we talked about balance earlier mm-hmm. and many times it's balancing your needs and other people's needs. And so it may be that um, you don't want to do anything, but you have little children that you feel like you need to create that holiday for. And so there's a balance. So mm-hmm. that second thought can be important. So it, it may be the second thought is, well, I'll do one thing mm-hmm. or um, we'll have one gathering mm-hmm. or I will do um just the, the cooking, mm-hmm. the decorating. I'll make one special dish. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I had one one time, you, you just maybe think about it with the cooking. Um, well, we'll have Christmas, but it's going to be, um, I'm ordering the food. Yeah, mm-hmm. catered. Yeah, I'm not making mm-hmm. anything. Yeah. Okay, so here's another first thought we hear a lot. No one understands my sorrow. Mm. Yes. Well, I would say you're right. Right. No one does understand exactly what this grief experience feels like for you. And I know sometimes people try to say, I know exactly how you feel. And you're like, no, you do not. Mm -hmm. Um, But we do know that some people are going through similar experiences, similar enough that they can support you or that they can, you know, have an idea of how you're feeling. And, you know, it would be um, a good idea to try to reach out to that kind of support if you can whether that's someone in your family who you feel like is experiencing similar grief to you or, um, you know, perhaps a grief group in your community. Um, You know, we offer those through the center as well. So, you know, you're exactly right. Nobody knows exactly what you're going through, but there are a lot of grieving people out there that do have an idea and that could possibly offer some support. Yeah. I know I might start to cry but I'm just not going to let myself. Well, a second thought might be um, that I'm going to allow myself to feel my feelings. Mm -hmm. I'm going to allow myself to cry. Um, uh, I think we, we talk a lot about having to redefine strong. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we think strong is, is showing no emotion. Mm -hmm. And truthfully, no, it's, it's strong to face Mm -hmm. your emotions, to feel them, to allow yourself Mm -hmm. to be there. So that second thought might be, I'm going to allow myself to feel my grief. Mm -hmm. Good. So this 
resonates with a lot of what we've said. There are too many memories and I don't want to think about them. Mm. Yeah. Memories are hard because they create such an emotional response. Like different memories can create um, different feelings. Mm -hmm. Uh, You may have, you know, very humorous memories of a loved one that we've talked a lot about that. Um, and, and those, fe- those memories may bring up, um, good feelings, but there may be other memories that are just too painful to mm-hmm. think about. Mm-hmm. So I guess what I would say is, are there some memories that you can find that do bring you comfort, mm-hmm. you know, maybe focus on those during this time and also to take breaks from your grief. Mm-hmm. We talk a lot about dosing grief and what that means is just, you know, can you spend a few minutes on a memory Mm -hmm. and then take a break and go do something else and get your mind off of it? You don't have to, you know, um, spend hours and hours. You can just dedicate a few minutes to your grief and then move along with your day. And that's going to give you a little bit of um, comfort and kind of grief release, Mm -hmm. emotional release, but not overwhelm you. Mm -hmm. So important. Absolutely. How can I be happy during the holidays? It feels wrong to celebrate. Mm, yes, we hear this one a lot mm-hmm. from clients because they think, well, it's nothing to celebrate. Right. Um, my life has changed in a way I didn't want it to. Um, but uh, and it does sometimes feel um, strange, again, to hold both of those feelings of celebration and joy, but also of pain and mm-hmm. sorrow. Um, but just embracing those. So a second a second thought may be I'm going to feel and experience what I feel. And so I'm going to welcome those moments of celebration and joy if I find them. Um, I'm going to allow myself to be happy. And I think um, what it comes down to is I'm going to allow myself to live Mm -hmm. because that's what living is, is experiencing all of those things, the good and the bad. Yes. And so, um, and we didn't choose um, for this to happen. Right. But nevertheless, we're left here to continue to live. And so allowing yourself to do that is important. I'm not going to make any plans. I'll wait for someone else to plan the holidays. I, I do hear this from mm-hmm. clients a lot of times. And and I understand uh, potentially maybe you could have someone else plan it. But I think that it would be good to have a conversation with them about that. Like I'm not up to planning this year. Could you handle it? If there's someone else that you think that that could do that for you. I think that's a perfect way to ask for help. And that's totally fine. But I think that you'll, you'll probably be disappointed if you just sit back and don't say anything and just wait for someone else to do it. Especially if people are used to you doing it. Mm -hmm. If they're used to you being the one to plan, they're not going to plan. Mm -hmm. (laughs) They're going to think you're doing it. So I think communication here is the important part. Um, and if there isn't anyone else to plan it or they're not going to, then, you know, just remember what we've said all along that you can modify the plan to work for you and to fill your own needs. Um, so, you know, those are two different options you could take. You could plan it and make it work for you, or you can ask for help and have someone else plan it for you. Because again, I think we just have to stress in all the years we've been doing this, people who have a plan, who go into the holidays with a plan, you know, report back that they feel like they coped better than they expected. And again, we've said the plan can modify, it can change, there can be option B and C and D, but you've got to really think about your needs and a need for a plan, um, you know, to help with the holidays is really important. Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. So, Sometimes we'll hear this thought kind of maybe two different ways. One, I don't have the energy. I don't know where to start. Or again, with the energy, I don't I don't feel like shopping or cooking this year and I'm not going to. Yeah. And um, I whew, totally understand that. Um, even when you're not grieving, some mm-hmm. grieving, sometimes it sounds like a lot. Um, but when you are, it's valid that you don't have that energy. But a second thought could be, um, I'm going to ask someone to help me. 
It could be uh, that I'm going to ask someone else to plan it, as Aaron said, or it could be I'm just going to do one thing. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm going to plan one thing. But that's where that plan, that written plan comes into play. Mm -hmm. It can feel overwhelming to think about it all. Mm -hmm. And so if you have something written down, just take one thing at a time. Mm -hmm. Just take it in small bite-sized pieces because you might, once you do a few things, have a little more energy. Sometimes, you know, uh, expending energy gives us energy. And so, um, so, but just taking it one small bite-sized piece at a time. I had a client ask about shopping and was really worried that the grandchildren and children were going to be upset because she, normally she had always enjoyed shopping, but she said, I honestly only feel like I can walk into a drugstore and just buy gift cards. And we talked about that. Like, again, that's what you're doing this year. Right. And, you know, and it was actually pretty humorous because by the time she she did go in there, it was really gas carts that were all that was left. Yeah. Like, that's what they're getting. <laughs> but that was, that's what they got that year. That's what she had the energy for. Yes. And, you know, we really just had to talk about her self-esteem and self-worth and that she wasn't becoming a terrible, awful person because that one year she gave gas cards. Yep. So. Absolutely. <laughs> I don't think I can get through the day. Yeah, we hear this a lot, you know, and the first thing that comes to my mind when thinking about this thought is how difficult the anticipation mm -hmm. is. And just, you know, we talk about the holiday buildup and leading up to that day. And a lot of times what I'll hear after the holidays is people will say the day wasn't as bad as I thought it was going right. to be. Uh, it was much worse than the days leading up yes. to it mm -hmm. because I was so worried about how I was going to do. And mm -hmm. that's totally understandable. So I think just keeping in mind that, you know, um, there is a lot of buildup. There is a lot of anticipation and mm -hmm. you're, you are, you do have a lot of worry going into it. But if you have that plan that we've talked about, just that loose plan, that's like, here's what I think I'm going to do to take care of myself on that day then at least while you're in that day, you have, you know, touch points of knowing some things to do next mm -hmm. yes. to help yourself get through to the end of the day. I, I think you're going to find that very helpful. Mm -hmm. And I also think that you might find, you know, the day's going to be difficult, mm -hmm. but it may not be as difficult as you're building it up in your mind mm -hmm. to be. Absolutely. And I think that's a really good point about having those touch points. And, um, you know, we may want to even use the word instead of a plan, a guide. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because a guide is flexible, you know, mm -hmm. and um, plan is probably more written in stone. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's just using it as a guide to help you, a tool to help you cope with that day. Mm -hmm. Almost like a map of how you're going to spend your right. time. Right. Absolutely. You exactly. know, it's Absolutely. like, well, in the morning, I've got this to do, mm -hmm. you know, and I know this is how I'm going to spend my time. Mm -hmm. And in the afternoon, this is how I'm going to spend my time because that's really what you're trying to do is just right. get through the time right mm -hmm. right yeah. exactly and i think too again sometimes things are going to sneak up on you i mean we've we've stressed here how much we believe in a plan but sometimes things just surprise us um mm. it i was just sitting here thinking like what what else should we make sure we say and um i was reminded of clients who were surprised by um christmas music like they hadn't mm. thought about that mm -hmm. And so, you know, that, again, we know music is such a strong connector for people and takes us right back to memories or events and things like that. And so, again, the guide, the map, the plan is so important, but also just remembering that just like grief on a normal Tuesday, this wave can come in that we weren't expecting mm -hmm. and really surprise us. Um, and that's why we can then modify the plan yes. for sure. <laughs> Well, as we wrap up um, part two of grief and the holidays, um, what would you like to leave our listeners with, with kind of a, a final thought or remembrance as they, um, as they enter this holiday season? Well, I would say um, allow change. You've had a lot of change in your life. Loss is, loss is change and uh, many other changes and secondary losses have come from this. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes the thought of cha more change does not sound appealing, but allowing that change for the holiday, allowing yourself to do something different, allowing it to be different, allowing it to feel different, mm -hmm. and sort of accepting that because uh, many times when we are um, – 
avoiding it is when the change is even more um, dramatic. And so just expecting it and allowing for it. Um, as we've been doing this um, episode, I've just been thinking, you're not a failure for the holidays to look different. Um, in fact, it's a guarantee. <laughs> it's going to look different. And you're not failing if you are not um, living up to your normal expectations or even the expectations that other people may have for your you know, behavior during the holidays. Your only goal is to get through to the other side mm -hmm. and take care of your needs. You know, that that's your main goal. So, um, you know, if you've done that, then you have succeeded. So just take care of yourself and get through it however you need to. And also give yourself permission to experience any uh, positive feelings that may come up. That also um, doesn't mean that you are failing at grief if you right. feel happy or, mm -hmm. you know, you have some joy or you experience some good things during the holidays. We want that to happen for you. You know, that doesn't mean that you're betraying your grief or betraying your loved one, like Carolyn was saying mm -hmm. earlier, you know, you still have a life to live and you still deserve to have joy. Absolutely. Well, thank you both so much for, for being here with us for both of these episodes uh, with Grief in the Holidays. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Carolyn and Erin, for being here for both of our episodes on Grief in the Holidays. To our listeners, grief does heal. Let me say that again. Grief does heal. We also know that it demands so much attention and care, especially at the holidays. Remember that your grief is a reflection of your love, and you are not alone. The world is full of grievers like you. You can learn more about us at www.baptistgriefcenters.org. You can visit our YouTube channel at Baptist Centers for Good Grief. And remember, grief is real, big, and better shared. We'll talk soon.